Hey everyone, welcome to another processing video. So today I'd like to talk about how I shot and edited this photo of the moonrise above Jackson, Wyoming. So just to briefly talk about this, this was a single shot taken with a very long telephoto lens at 150 millimeters because if I had shot this at a wide angle, it would have dwarfed the moon in comparison to the landscape. So whenever you shoot the moon and you, you want it to be done in a single shot and you want the moon to look large and impressive, you have to go with a very long lens. Also, I want to talk a little bit about the camera settings here a little bit because the exposure that I came out with ended up being a little darker than I had hoped. But I had to shoot this at a fast shutter speed while the sun was setting, so light was pretty limited. Whenever you shoot the moon, you want to have a relatively fast shutter speed at about 150 to 200 millimeters. You don't want to be any slower than about 1 30th of a second. And I shot this at an aperture of f-stop 13. And you want to shoot, anytime you're dealing with the moon, you want to shoot at a fairly narrow aperture. Narrow meaning... A higher number for your f-stop. Your f-stops should be above 8. The ISO was 125 and really for this photo I should have I should have upped that to about 400 which would have given me a little more uh, a little better exposure to work with here but quite frankly this photo wasn't planned out and I was really scrambling to get everything up and shot before the moon was covered up in, in the clouds or before the moon got too too high. So very briefly that's that's how I shot this and so we'll go into Lightroom now and we'll look at the raw exposure. Again anytime you're shooting and you're editing uh, especially with Lightroom you want to shoot in raw because that gives you the most editing power which is very useful for a photo like this which was underexposed a little bit so because it is underexposed we want to take a look at the histogram here and an underexposed photo is going to have everything in this graph is going to be pushed over to the left the left side represents the darks and so everything is kind of pushed into the dark range and what we want to do ideally is to push everything over to the right by adjusting our exposure without clipping the darks or the whites. The whites is represented and the highlights are represented on the right side. So we want to do that to where these triangles here, I've talked about these before too. If you clip a black or a white, or, or a highlight rather, these triangles will be filled in. So if I bring the blacks down to where we lose the blacks in the picture, we lose the darks, then this triangle here is going to be filled in with, uh, with white to indicate that you have clipped the darks in the picture. Meaning we have brought, the, the darks are, have been brought down so low or they're so underexposed that there is no information given in these pixels. And you can also hover over the triangle here to see the parts of the image that have been clipped. And they are highlighted here in blue when I do that, when I just hover over that, that triangle. So I, I'm going to reset that now that I've explained that. So the first thing, after examining the histogram, the first thing I want to do is bring up my exposure. I'm going to bring it up quite a bit. So that has brought my graph over significantly to the right and it's a, it's a lot more even right now. We want everything here to be more concentrated towards the middle. After I bring up the exposure I want to bring down the highlights a lot because the highlights are going to be mostly in your landscapes is going to be represented in the sky. So if I turn my highlights down that's going to bring out the uh, the the details that were lost in the clouds a little bit as well as the moon and when I do that in this image I can see that there's some dust spots that were on my sensor 
and we can simply remove those using the spot removal tool in Lightroom. So I'm going to go over here to this. Uh, this is the spot remover tool. And generally, I can use my mouse wheel to adjust the size of that. We want to make it about the size of the spot. And I'm just going to click on that and generally it will take from another part of the image and just clone it over top of that. And that usually works out pretty well. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't match the area that we're uh, replacing, then you can always move this around and it'll it'll match it up with whatever area you have that um, other circle in. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to click the spot removal tool again to apply those changes. And now moving on here, I want to have my darks represented a little better in this. Everything just kind of looks washed out here and you can bring your darks back back to the left to make them a little deeper and richer. So I'm going to pull my blacks down a little bit. I don't want to pull them all the way back until they're clipped because I don't want to lose any of my darks, but I want to pull it until the histogram is touching, almost touching the left side. I can bring up my exposure a little bit more to compensate for that, to bring the lights back over to the right. I can bring my shadows back just a little bit and my whites just to kind of lighten the image up. So that is sort of a rundown of the very basic exposure changes. These these are the changes you want to make uh, first of all to every image. Now I want to make some contrast adjustments so I'm going to move the contrast slider over a little bit and we can make this image really contrasty. Normally I don't want to go above about 20 to 30 ish but I'm going to bring the contrast of this way up because it will really bring out the texture in these mountains and the clouds and the moon as well a little bit and additionally we can up the contrast even further around the small details in the picture using the clarity slider it's really exposing these uh, rough ridges in the mountains a little bit better and again with this particular image I can bring the clarity up quite a bit normally I don't mess with clarity at, at all but uh, for images with the moon it really really helps to bring out uh, the textures in in the moon as well as the landscape so I'm gonna bring that up dehaze is another slider I don't typically use but in an image like this one where where you're focused in on a very distant object distant objects appear to be much lighter in comparison to things that are closer to us because there's more atmosphere between us and the object so dehaze can actually be useful in situations like this where we're using long telephoto lenses it can kind of cut out the lightness that's created from that distance I'm probably just going to leave that alone for now. Well, I'm going to bring it up a little bit because I like the the dark and the contrast that it's adding to the to the mountain range here. I can see that some of the adjustments I've made has made the image too dark again. So I can again bring the exposure slider up a little more to compensate for that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to add a graduated filter to the probably both the top and the bottom. I want to bring out the the sunlight that's hitting the top of these mountains here. The sun is actually setting behind me and it was lighting up the tops of these mountains. That way the, that, that's the reason why the color is a little bit different from this mountain top to this one. And I just want to get that I just want to highlight that a little more and I can do that with the graduated filter by bringing it up over top of the bottom here to cover these mountains and I can just bring the contrast up with that a little bit and as I do that it's beginning to clip some of my blacks so as I bring the contrast up farther I can also bring up the blacks to compensate so I feel like that has 
done the job of highlighting the tops of these mountains a little more so when I'm done I want to just click on the graduated filter button again here and I want to do this for the top too just to bring out the moon a little more we'll probably just use the clarity slider here maybe bring out bring down the highlights a little more so I'm going to bring down the highlights more and I'm going to bring up the clarity with this graduated filter and that just highlights the lines of these clouds a little more and brings out more detail in the moon so now I want to take a look at this and make sure that the color is what I want it to be um, I just used the auto white balance for this but I want it to be a little bit warmer than it is so I'm going to bring up the temperature slider to the right just a little bit to make it warmer I want the overall image to be somewhat purple because this was shot near twilight and at sunset and the opposite side of the sunset is generally purple which it happened to be I don't want to I don't want it to be too purple but I just want to make sure that it is represented here so I'm just going to play with the temperature and the tint until I get it to where I want it and I think let's see what it looked like before see that's the auto white balance was too blue so I'm going to bring that up to about 6,000 that looks good and after we do that then we can adjust the saturation and vibrance so what's the difference between these two sliders saturation and vibrance basically do the same thing but vibrance brings up the saturation of the colors that are muted the most and saturation it's kind of a global saturation adjustment it's going to bring up the saturation of everything so a lot of times what I'll do I'll use I'll use both of these sliders but not all the time so I will probably just bring up the global saturation and then leave vibrance where it's at really we don't have to add too much to this picture because it's already pretty pretty bright and colorful so in addition to all of the other contrast adjustments that we've done we can also add an S curve adjustment to our uh, to our tone curve here in Lightroom and we can do that in conjunction with the contrast adjustments that we've already made or we can do this uh, by itself and I like to use a combination of the contrast slider and this just to bring more richness to the to the pictures and an S curve is it's just what it sounds like we're going to create um, a slight S shape in this curve so the top right of this curve is going to again just like the histogram it's going to represent the highlights whereas the lower left portion is going to represent the darks so I want to create an S curve here by uh, bringing up the lights and then bringing down the darks a little bit and it's hard to see that this is an S but it is in the basic shape of an S because we don't want to make that any more exaggerated than it is because it's already fairly contrasty but that simple adjustment has uh, really improved the contrast even further in the image and it's um, made these darks a lot more deep without sacrificing them uh, there's there's one last thing that I want to do and I want to crop out these dark clouds at the top because they're a little bit distracting so I'm gonna click my crop overlay tool and I'm just gonna bring down this corner here so there you have it we covered everything that you might want to do when making adjustments to landscape photos in Lightroom and once you have that process down you'll be editing with more intention rather than just playing around with the sliders to see what they to see what they do and what changes they make you can just methodically go through 
the exposure adjustments, the adjustments with the highlights and shadows. And these are the things that you'll end up doing with every single image that you edit. I hope you guys found this to be useful. If you like these videos and you want to make sure that I continue to make them, you may want to consider donating to my Patreon if you're not already a patron. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates, and I'll also include a link to my social media as well as my website in the description.